and welcome to the Amy Edwards Show. I'm your host, Amy Edwards, and we are here to uplevel our lives all the time, find that next best version while loving this one that we're in. And I am so excited because we have been on a little bit of a health kick lately, like wellness, and we're talking to an expert today, and I am so thrilled. So let's just jump right in and get to it with Risa Gru. Risa is a functional nutritionist and certified autoimmune coach and the author of Food Frame. Risa, you have helped people from contestants on The Biggest Loser to pro golfer Fred Couples, and you have your own line of supplements, which are evaluated and monitored for potential contaminants like heavy metals and pesticides. You ensure compliance with FDA good manufacturing practices, and they're gluten, dairy, soy, and sugar-free, as well as non-GMO. I love your attention to detail and your particularness about what goes in your body and all your expertise. And I'm so excited to talk about all things health, gut health, everything's related, and your book Food Frame today and what people can do to break their own toxicity patterns, perhaps. So welcome. Thank you. It's so awesome to be here. And I love that you say up level. I, I love how you describe that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm always looking for that next thing, but I think there's just so much to be said for loving who we are right now. And so I think that that speaks to wellness a lot too, because, you know, I really liked your book. I read through the whole thing, Food Frame. And, you know, we are looking to up-level our wellness, but at the same time, I don't want people to get scared or mad at themselves about where they are now or perhaps things that they've done. So, how do you balance that with your clients when they're maybe in fear of their own toxicity and things that they've done and and want to get out of it? Yeah, I just feel like, you know, testing and knowing is so much better than not knowing because fear is really, you know, false evidence appearing real, right? Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, we can't, we can't, we can fear stuff we don't know, but I feel like that's such a waste of time. So let's find out why and what and if, and, you know, I always say, I can't play darts with the lights off when I cannot see the target. So I need to know, I do extensive testing and I'm testing you for, you know, a, a very comprehensive blood panel. So I'm looking at all two four markers of your blood sugar. I'm looking at all nine markers of your thyroid. I'm looking at your iron panel, your white blood cells. You know, is there a viral pattern, a bacterial pattern? I'm looking at inflammation markers with which conventional medicine doesn't typically look for. So I'm pretty comprehensive in that blood panel. I'm going to find, you know, what's going on to the root of it. And I will also, uh, I also work with everybody who I work with gets a stool test. So I'm going to see what's inside, you know, do we have parasites, mm-hmm. fungus, candida, H. pylori, Giardia. Do we have, how are the good guys? Do we have, you know, the bad guys, the, you know, overgrowth of this, or, you know, are you having fat malabsorption? Are you not making your own digestive enzymes? What's your inflammation look like? I mean, I'm getting a boatload of information. And at that point, then we have a plan, right? So then there's no fear needed for that because we've got a plan to address whatever is the situation. I like that. I like just like knowledge is power, kind of approaching it from that way. Like I'm going to enjoy finding out about my own wellness. Cause I think I've had, I'm 52. I think I've had a little bit of ignorance is bliss kind of thing around my own sometimes. And I have hypothyroid. I am on Synthroid. And I think a lot of people listening can identify with thyroid issues. You have had a journey from hypothyroid to Hashimoto, to vegan, to autoimmune cleanse, to gut bacteria, to a wild story, right? To uh, gum disease, which like everything's all linked. And so I think that it's been like a challenge for me to really say, oh my gosh, okay, what do I not know? And overcome that a little bit. So let's dive into your story a little bit too and and your background. Yeah. So, you know, I, I grew up in a house as a kid with my mom was perpetually on a diet, right? She was trying to lose five or 10 pounds and, you know, it was just this deprivation, starvation. I can't eat that. I won't eat that. Or then she would eat that. And then, you know, there were good foods and bad foods. I was very confused because I always thought the bad foods were really good. They tasted yummy to me. So I had all this confusion, right? My grandma was doing the same thing at her house, you know, and then mm-hmm. she'd go to the fat farm every year was what she called it. And I, I realized, you know, as I grew wow. up that the fat farm with, she went with my aunt, 
was, you know, Canyon Ranch Spa and they went for a week and, you know, so it was like this or on or off switch, right? It was not anything about lifestyle and loving your body and feeling good and nourishing your body. It was this deprivation, right? So what did I do in high school? I went, you know, and I read every fad diet there was, and I went on every single one of them, right? Because I was always trying to lose like two or three pounds. So enough of that. I was like so sick of that. And I just kind of dived into nutrition. I wasn't working in nutrition at the time. I was working in the sports uh, world. And then um, I got married and right away we got pregnant. No problem conceiving, easy pregnancy. Everything was great. And then we tried for our second and it just wasn't happening. If I did get pregnant with a lot of effort, I would lose the baby and um, I just couldn't conceive. It was just really difficult. So when I finally acquiesced, I went to see a fertility specialist. He basically did some testing and told me that my thyroid was an underachiever. I was hypothyroid and handed me a script for Synthroid, which is a hugely um, uh, prescribed medication for thyroid. And it's a synthetic T4, mm -hmm. uh, which I'll get into a little bit later, but he handed me the script and I said, well, how long do I take it for? And he said, oh, every day. And I said, no, 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 for how long? And he said, oh, for the rest of your life. So I walked out of that meeting uh, with the doctor and I had two major burning questions in my head. The first one was, why is it that my thyroid is not producing a hormone that it was actually built to produce? And the second question is, why is the doctor giving me a synthetic medication to mimic that hormone and not even curious about why I'm not producing it? Aren't we trying to fix the, the, the system? And that kind of started me on my journey. Um, I realized after doing a lot of deep diving that I had this very common gene mutation that I test everybody for called MTHFR, basically meaning that you do not methylate or process either your B12 and or your folate, your B9. So super important for fertility and um, and miscarriages, but lots of other things too. And so I started taking the right B vitamin. And next thing you know, I got pregnant, had a great, great pregnancy. And um, my son was born. And a few years after that, I went to see a naturopathic doctor and they diagnosed me with Hashimoto's. So now my thyroid was like in full on state of attack. You know, all these antibodies in my system were attacking my thyroid gland and eating away at it. So I'm like, whoa, hold the phone. We've got to stop this train. It's off the track and nobody's asking why and how and where and how do we reverse it, right? So that's really what started my process. I was I had gone back to school for nutrition at that point. And then I became a functional nutritionist. Um, so I'm always looking for root cause prevention and um, looking at data as well. But I really, it took me a while. I, I, I couldn't even find a list of root causes at that time for autoimmunity. So I created my own and I went down that list. And of course, I had every single one of them. So it took me a while to treat each one. But I was able to reverse my Hashimoto's. I do not have antibodies anymore, which is awesome. And I had very, very high levels. So um, I got to the root of it. And now I'm fortunate enough to be able to watch people heal and help people reverse theirs. Yeah, that's really incredible. And you didn't mention the uh, abscess that you had, the tooth. Like that yeah. fascinates me to no end about, you know, our gums and our gut. Dental health is key. And yeah. so through the process, I um, my cholesterol was quite high and I have genetics for high cholesterol. And I'm not worried that much about cholesterol because we know it does not cause cardiovascular disease, but plaque buildup and inflammation do. So I did a full heart panel by with Boston Health Clinic and uh, my, my chances of my risk factors for cardiovascular disease were quite high. And here I was eating, like I was vegan. I didn't eat sugar. I didn't eat anything like French fries or Oreo. I ate none of that. So I ate just real actual vegetables and grains and legumes um, and at the time. And then I, I just was so puzzled, why is this happening? And so I know that teeth are really related to um, heart health. So that's uh, when I did my stool test, my first stool test, and I took it to a biological dentist. She took one look at it and she goes, that's a salivary bacteria. Put me into the um, CAT scan and sure enough, they found this abscess and it was from a root that had been left there from the time I had my wisdom teeth extracted 23 years prior. And I never had, you couldn't see it, you couldn't feel it. I had zero, zero symptoms. And so I had that taken out, that root taken out. And of course, while they're in there, they found a piece of metal that they must have left in there. for. Oh my God. Yeah, from, you know, one of the tools probably. So, um, you know, what was that doing, right? And so once I found that, 
then everything normalized. My cholesterol, my blood sugars, everything came down. And that's why I give everybody a stool test. Oh, it gives me chills. I haven't done a stool test. My partner needs to do one too. He's a He's got all sorts of things going on. He's had malaria like four times, traveled to Africa a lot. And so I don't know what's going on in his gut. I'm dying to do it. I wish I'd done it before. I'm, I want to work with you. I want to do this do whole thing. Yeah. Like I'm so fascinated that they could find salivary bacteria in you and then you could uncover this piece of metal in your mouth and a root. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I talked to somebody recently who had a similar story. So it happens. It's not, in, in, you know, you wouldn't really think to put that together, but no now, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. People have crazy journeys. Yeah. They really do. And so that's the kind of thing that just blows my mind. Like it can be something so different because when I was diagnosed with hypothyroid, I felt like every woman my age, like around 40, it was happening to. And I was like, well, I'm feeling lethargic. And I fought it for a long time. I did the uh, armor, which you talk about. I think that's the T324. And it just wasn't hitting. And now I'm working with a wellness company and they've changed my my prescription. So it's not really Synthroid anymore, but still I'm like, why aren't we treating the root? What is really going on? And how can we take control of this? Because I didn't want to be on it for the rest of my life, but I, I am right now, but I'd like to change that, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And, and fortunately our paradigm in conventional medicine and allopathic medicine is we don't look at why we just, right. that we just give you a pill for that, right? It's a pill for an ill paradigm. And it's, it's not really effective. And we are a very sick and obese nation and we're not talking about food. We're starting this conversation. It's just starting a movement, which I'm so excited about, but we hadn't up until just recently. And I mean, I'm talking like two weeks ago, they just, a group of people went to uh, Washington and we're like, we've got to get these additives out of our system. Our, our biz it's like, you know, it, it's crazy. It's a billion, I think it's $4 billion, our additive uh, uh, industry and uh, preservatives and dyes and chemicals in our food that other countries do not allow. The FDA has approved 68, I'm sorry, 86,000, 86,000 chemicals for us to use. We're breathing them. We're putting them on our skin, on our hair, on our nails. We're putting them in our food. I mean, it's insane to me. So you know, I went to the movies the other night and I just could not believe and the quantity size, right? And people, everybody has one They're, You know, they got their soda and they've got their, their, their candy. And it's just, this is where are we going? It's just, it, it, we're, we're becoming a very toxic uh, country and we, we have to, we really have to be diligent about toxic load. Why are those things being approved? Why are 86,000 chemicals approved? Is, are they lobbying? Like what's. Absolutely. Why? It's my fucking, I oh. fucking lobbying is like the thing that if we could get rid of lobbying, oh my God. But right. I mean, okay. think about it. Think about yeah. what lobbying is, right? It's just schmoozing to get what you, yeah. I mean, that should not be allowed, right? No, but, no. Yeah. <laughs> it it yeah. wipes common sense out of the right. equation. <laughs> and now we have this GLP-1 craze, right? With Ozempic and Mangiorno. And so it doesn't, you know, I hear people saying all the time, oh, I don't have to worry about what I eat anymore. I don't have to exercise. And I've got this pill for that, right? So it's really, you know, it, it's such a bad paradigm. And if we really mm -hmm. took out the chemicals in our food and our factory food, and then we we increased the, the nutrients in our soils, we would be a much better nation. Our insurance is company uh, payments would be down. Uh, people wouldn't be as sick. You can't even get into hospitals or doctor's offices. I mean, sickness is big business. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. It's all driven by money, which is really unfortunate. No, yeah, it's such a broken system. All right. So how can we take control? Let's talk about food frame for a few, because you mentioned a vegan diet and I don't want people to feel like that is what you're teaching people. You have avenues for paleo, keto, autoimmune diet, vegan, low lectin, and low FODMAP. Do I say that right? Huh? FODMAP. Okay. Yeah, an and uh, and then you also, which we should touch on sugar because uh, you say sugar is the devil. So the devil. there you go. I, yeah. uh, I So I figure let's, let's dive into some diet avenues for people once they've, I guess you recommend the cleanse first or I don't yeah. know. 
What's so the- what, what the way I work typically is, you know, I've been doing this for decades. And when I first started my uh, practice, I would put everybody on the same anti-inflammatory protocol. And mm-hmm. I would say that most people would do great, but there were some people who just didn't do well. They would be bloated or gassy, or they wouldn't lose weight or something would happen that they were having uh, not the greatest results. So it took me a while, but I realized that there are two foundational issues that I focus on big time in my office because these are the things that either optimize our health or hinder our health. One is Mm -hmm. systemic inflammation, right? We know that that is the driver of disease. If we didn't know that before COVID, we should absolutely know that now. People who are dying were in third stage inflammation, which you can get from blood sugar dysregulation, lots of things, or, you know, very toxic, you can get very inflamed. And the mm-hmm. other one is gut health and gut health is extremely important. We just kind of covered that with the stool test, right? So those are right. the things I'm focusing on because at the end of the day, if we can kind of address those two things, somebody's going to be able to optimize their health. Now, what do you eat is the question because we've all mm-hmm. had that book that comes out, everybody's reading it. You know, your neighbor lost 42 pounds, but you lost nothing. And you're like, what is the deal? And mm-hmm. I realize that the reason that it is, is because we should all not be eating the exact same way. So we should be eating according to what our current health status is. So if you are in, you have SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, maybe of chronic bloating or chronic gas or diarrhea or constipation or alternating both, then low FODMAP is something that I'm going to recommend for you for a short term until we can kill that bacteria in the small intestines. If you've got autoimmunity, we've we've got a fire in the basement, right? We've got a massive raging inflammation fire and you go to the doctor and typically they'll give you a little squirt gun, but I'm going to give you a fire hose, right? We got to <laughs> get it out with food and we got to get it out with supplements, which are basically just food, but high concentrations of anti-inflammatory things like omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, glutathione, turmeric, 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 things like that, resveratrol. Mm. So I'm going to give you those things to get that fire out, to quell that fire. And then um, as far as food is concerned, you know, what I do is I get those tests back and the stool test and I figure out which uh, pro- uh, which eating lifestyle is best for you. Now, some of them are temporary because we're addressing something and then some of them are long-term, right? So um, I highlighted six different uh, eating lifestyles, diet types that I recommend most of the time in my office. Um, I am not a huge fan of vegan or vegetarian typically, but some people do it for uh, religious reasons or cultural reasons. And I totally respect that. And I'm going to work with you with those, um, with those requirements. Um, But it's usually I'm going to recommend, you know, being on a regular paleo program is really the one that I recommend for maintenance for most people. It's how I eat now, but I've done pretty much all those uh, different diet types at different points in my life. And that's where I see people thrive. So when you're eating according to what your current health status is, then you're absolutely going to thrive. And then I make recommendations on what what goes next after you're on an elimination protocol, then you have some options for maintenance, for long-term maintenance. And that's how I think it's best. I do a lot of genetic testing as well, so I can see nutrient things and, and you know what you do best if you don't do well with gluten or dairy or things like that. Um, we add those in because it's all very personalized. It's not a one size fits all. Right. You do allergy testing too, right? You do that. Yes, exactly. I've never done that. I haven't done that. What is the genetic? Is that blood or how do you do that? The genetic is a, um, uh, it's a blood test. I'm sorry. The one that I'm doing now is a spit test. Okay. It's great. Uh, I really cool. like it. It shows like a lot of your athletic, like, are you an athlete, you know, an elite athlete? It's very interesting to see. Wow. Do you have, you know, are you a snacker? It's just very interesting <laughs> things. How do you, what nutrients do you need? Like, do you need vitamin D? Are you the person who absorbs it really effectively? And of course, these are g- your genetics. I always say genetics load the gun, but your lifestyle and, um, you know, environment pull the trigger. So, um, but it's- Wait, a- I- I can be a snacker genetically. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank God, I'm not to blame for my yeah. snacking. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? And it's <laughs> yes. true. When I always go through it with people, they're like, oh yeah, that's exactly right. You oh know? my God, what a trip. Yeah. What a it's trip. Really I want to do all of this. This yeah. sounds so interesting and gives you such a handle on your health and I think that I have operated under the fallacy so many times that I can just get what I need from food and, you know, and we're not set up for success in that way because of the things you mentioned, like 
nutrients in the soil and our government, you know, so we're kidding ourselves if we think that we can operate in that way. And, you know, it's better to have this knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, as years are, are are going on in our recent years, we've starting to get all this information and you don't just have to get it through your doctor. We're, we've just bypassed that altogether because insurance companies really are running the whole show and they're yeah. telling you what you can test for and what you can't test for. So I order my labs directly. I don't even go through my insurance, even though I have to pay for it every month. Mm -hmm. I don't really use it that much. And I order my own labs for myself and for everybody else. And one time I did order it many years ago through my insurance company and my copay was more than if I just ordered it through my office. Because I'm thinking how many hands are in that pocket? How many people are getting paid off by my blood work, right? And then of course you can't read it. And then no. people are always telling me, do I get to keep this? I'm like, of course, this is your blood work. You paid for it. It's your blood work. You should have it. And then of course I teach, I go through a very extensive appointment with people for an hour and go through the important markers. So I want them to know what this means and how to read it. I really hope that we're going to see more advancement in that area in the next few years because, you know, it's just, it means nothing to us when we get our blood work back, right? We need I, I think we are. I've already been doing that myself. I work with Ways Too Well, uh, which is a friend's company and they operate here in Texas and some other states, but it's been trying to break these cycles and I'm seeing more, like you're doing the work, I'm seeing more companies that are trying to break the, uh, I feel like we've been brainwashed right. into thinking this is all I know. And like, I love that people are like, wait, I get to keep this? <laughs> You're like, yeah, you get to see it and keep it. And <laughs> yeah. And so many people that my doctor won't give me my blood work. Like what? I don't get it. Yeah. I don't it, get any. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. I think, I think the paradigm is starting to shift and there's I do too. functional medicine is really becoming more prevalent. Uh, there's still so many people who don't know about it and they go yeah. through the system and they just keep taking pill after pill after pill. Um, but I do think a younger generation is getting in and realizing that that is not our way to health. I do too. I do too. And, and I want to model that to my kids. I'm sure you do too. Like, sure. how's that, how's that been with your kids? Like, I guess, oh, actually you address that some in your book. I know about yeah. uh, what you fed them and everything and how they function now. So. Yeah. I have a 29 year old daughter who uh, got married last year to her high school sweetheart. So I've known him forever. And when he was in a fraternity in college, he was the president of his fraternity and everybody, he would teach the boys if they had a soda, he would say, what is that? And they would say poison. So he, we, yeah. So it was just really funny. I, I'm so proud of all of them and they feed their dog really healthy, but they meal prep every single week. They eat super, super, super clean, you know, no seed oils. They they're gluten-free and dairy-free. My son just graduated from college and he lives on his own. He meal preps every single Sunday and he makes his lunch and his dinner. He takes it to the office. And, you know, we're really, we, we know too much to eat yeah. bad food. You just know, you know, and you know how you feel and how you function when you eat mm -hmm. well and when you don't. Yeah. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. I went to Rancho La Puerta. Are you familiar with that place? I got there for several years. Yeah. For me. Yeah. I bet you have. Uh, yeah. They have amazing people come in and speak right. and, but they grow their own food. And like, I didn't even stay the whole week because we went for a special event and I stayed half a week and I came back on a Saturday night after eating there for, since Wednesday. And I was just like, why do I feel so good? I got off a plane and I feel good. Like it just, it, it didn't compute with the way I usually feel. And it, all I could do is like, I've been eating that and it just makes such a difference, but it's almost like you have to experience it to really even understand. And yeah, you know, when I put people on my detox for two weeks, I do that intentionally because I'm cleaning out their liver, which is, you know, the key to the castle. So they're going to optimize their organs and organ function. But um, I really am putting bumpers on there, right? It's not a starvation program. They are going to lose weight. It's not a weight loss program. I firmly believe that weight loss is side effect of wellness and it is a wellness program but everybody mm -hmm. loves it because they lose weight, but you feel good, right? So at the end of those two weeks, before I get your labs back, we're sitting down to go through your labs. And I say, how do you feel? And they're like, you know, six of my seven symptoms are gone, right? So that's great. Now that doesn't always happen for everybody, but at least, you know, a couple of them tend to go away now. And if they don't, then there's, you know, there's another layer here, but we're really decreasing that inflammation, increasing that gut, gut health. So eating 
is just incredibly critical for our health. And I don't think people realize that until they do a detox or they go to Rancho La Puerta or they, they change yeah. the way they eat. Well, I know uh, Dr. Daniel Amen talks a lot about that and, and our gut being our second brain. So you're you're optimizing your brain as well, which is, exactly. I feel like, really coming into the conversation. Exactly. And Dr. Amen is all about inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brain inflammation. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. This podcast is sponsored by Wands. Wands creates luxurious pleasure practice tools that help people become more connected to their bodies. They have a huge selection of incredible items like Yoni eggs, the most gorgeous crystal pleasure wands you've ever seen, free bleed blankets, and my favorites, the trademarked glass cervix wand and the Venus wand, which is their heaviest wand made of stainless steel and their new ecstatic vibrator. This company is woman-owned and creates products designed to help you become more connected to your body and your pleasure and support the healing of pelvic pain. Get yours today in their always discreet packaging at wands.com. That's wands with two A's, W-A-A-N-D-S dot com. And use my link in the show notes to get 10% off or enter the code Amy Edwards at checkout. Again, that's wands, W-A-A-N-D-S dot com. The Amy Edwards Show is sponsored in part by Higher Dose. Higher Dose creates wellness tech for everyone with tools, supplements, and body care. And I have 15% off for you with my code MAGIC15. Higher Dose has been featured in Goop, Glamour, L, Vogue, Bazaar, Allure, and more. I have their infrared pulsed electromagnetic field or PEMF mat, which emits electromagnetic waves that mimic natural frequencies found in nature, stimulating and encouraging your body's natural recovery process. It also has 20 pounds of crystals in it and has shown to ease chronic pain, aid in exercise recovery and circulation, deepen your meditations, reduce stress, and improve total body relaxation. I also love their red light face mask. It stimulates collagen, reduces fine lines, regenerates cells, and it's soft and easy to use in store and even travel with. I'm a true fan of these items and more like their glow serum. So I'm excited to offer you 15% off using my code MAGIC15. Go to the show notes. You can click through on the link right there. Or if you go to higher dose, just enter the code MAGIC15 for 15% off. HigherDose.com. This podcast is sponsored by The Collective ATX. If you're looking for the best in hair extensions, it's The Collective ATX. They do mine, and I won't go anywhere else. I've tried them all over the years, and finally, I've found what makes my real hair stronger and fuller, and even works with my natural curl. They keep all their extensions in-house so there's no weight, and they specialize in no damage to your natural hair like traditional hair extension methods. Plus, they're pros at color and covering gray. I have literally never in my life been happier with my color. They were named a top 200 salon by Salon Today in 2023. They've changed my hair journey. Let them change yours. The Collective ATX link is in the show notes. You mentioned glutathione and uh, you talk in your book about oxidative stress. So I thought maybe we could touch on that. I just did an episode with a glutathione expert and learned a lot about it. So I just thought maybe could we touch on that for a second? Yeah, it's super important um, for pretty much everybody because we do have a lot of oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is basically, you know, putting stress on the body that is going, it's basically what creates disease, right? Mm -hmm. so glutathione is something that we all make. We all make it, um, you know, from the time we're born to almost to the time we die. But as we age, we produce less, right? And we almost, and we only have like a finite amount of glutathione. So once it leaves the building, it's really gone. So at some ages, you need to replenish it. In addition, it's a great thing to sweep things out of the system. So in, in that case, it's very anti-inflammatory, right? So you don't want to do any killing without any flushing uh, mm. mechanism for that, right? So it helps with flushing things out. I find it tremendously helpful for immunity. We travel quite a bit and... It's so funny. We laugh at e with each other because we go places and people, they're like calling us going, we all got COVID. And we're like, 
we're good. So um, it's really, it's amazing for immunity too, but it really is, it's our master antioxidant. So it really is very protective. So I really firmly believe, and my glutathione that I have is uh, with N-acetylcysteine, NAC, and a lot of people will take NAC instead of glutathione because it is the precursor to making glutathione. I just give you mm. Oh, cool. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, let's talk a little bit about travel and flexibility and how do you recommend, how do you function when you travel eating wise? Because I am traveling a lot right now and I'm really trying to figure out my systems. Yeah. So preparation is absolutely key. I am a hundred percent gluten-free. I will eat a little gluten from time to time only in Italy. Um, but I have traveled Asia. I've traveled all over Europe. I've, I travel pretty extensively and I don't eat uh, poorly. You know, now can I control the oils that I get in restaurants? No, I cannot control that. So I take my glutathione, I take all my anti-inflammatories with me and I help that. I take my gluten flam with me. So I know that if I do have cross-contamination of gluten, that I'm okay. Um, but I, preparation is key. I cannot get on a plane and just wing it. Mm -hmm. I just starve to death, right? I just, even if I order a gluten-free meal, I'm going to have my nuts. I'm going to have um, my my turkey sticks with me. Um, I will bring a hard boiled egg if needed. And um, I have some bars in my office that I'll use um, that are low glycemic, no crap in them. And I use those. So I always travel with food. Now, if I don't need it, I don't need it. But if I do, I will. Now, I'm always, I always focus on protein, fat, and fiber for myself and for everybody I work with because that's really what makes us work. And so you can always get protein pretty much everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, fats, good fats like avocado or nuts or good oils or olives. I love olives. Trader Joe's has little packets of olives. I used to travel with those and you can absolutely do that. They have green olives now too and um, and Kalamata. So um, olives are a really good fat as well. Seeds are a good fat. Um, I use a lot of chia seeds or hemp seeds. I put them in my shake every day. And, um, and then fiber. So fiber, you can usually find vegetables. Now there are places I go that I cannot find vegetables. If it's a meal, it's not a problem. But if I need to go to a local market and pick up some carrots or um, whatever kind of fiber I need to get, I will do that for sure. Yeah, it's just, it's like real lifestyle changes. Like really, planning for me is like the trick. I am in a mastermind group and they had somebody talking about wellness last night on our call. And it it was just so funny. I, it struck me how much preparation makes a difference. I even have to plan my workout the next day. I have to think through my timing, think through my sleep, you know, and um, we can't wing it. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, anyone no. I know that's successful, right? They have two qualities, all of them. And, and I have been fortunate enough to work with amazing people and I have amazingly successful people in my life, not just in business, but successful marriages and successful artists and athletes. I mean, I'm very good friends with one of the, the most decorated athletes of our time. And, you know, he's the perfect person. He possesses these two qualities, but all of them do across the board. One is sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. We make sacrifices. And the other one is discipline, consistency, right? And you we were just talking about that. And if you do not plan, then you just, it doesn't work. If you're going to go make a, a sales pitch to you know your biggest customer and you don't have a presentation, you're just going to wing it. I, you know, chances are you're probably not going to do that well. Most right. people prepare. So if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So um, that is critical. I plan, I, I meal prep all the time. You know, every Sunday or Monday, I make my dressings, I'll make pesto, I'll make chicken salad, I'll cut up my vegetables, make hard boiled eggs. So I always have something. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I'm in the car, I've got celery and carrots and radishes or whatever it is that I've got that week, um, uh, along with some nuts. So I think that we can't emphasize that enough because that's make or break for me. If I'm tired, like today, I, I don't know what's going on. So I got some congestion thing going on and, uh, it's just like, I know that I've got some stuff ready to go in my fridge. That's healthy that I can function with or throw together a bowl or something like that. And that's the difference between me shoving chips in my mouth and like exactly. um, feeling good and making healthy choices. And so like, that's, that's such the yeah. key. If it's not Where, the refrigerator, you're going into the pantry for dead food, right? Yeah. It, yeah. Right. And you know, what percentage, where does flexibility fall in that? Do we have some, or is it like, just, we got to stay diligent? 
Um, you know, I, to, to a degree, it depends. You know, I always say to people, you know, you're in the ring with Muhammad Ali. How many gloves do you want? Right. <laughs> Somebody's coming into my office. They're highly inflamed. They've got blood sugar dysregulation. Their thyroid's tanked. You don't have a lot of flexibility. But right. if I'm working with somebody who's done the work for six months, let's say, and they're on their way to Italy, I'll go have fun. Right. So it depends. Right. I, I categorize it as food for sport and food for survival. And food for survival is what we should be eating. Most people come into my office eating more food for sport. What do I feel like? What am I in the mood for? What sounds good? Mm. You know, what can I drive through to pick up or whatever? What's convenient? And so when you're eating for survival, then there's always going to be room for food for sport, right? It's my birthday. It's Mother's Day. It's a trip to Italy. It's somewhere that it's something or it's Tuesday and I just really feel like chips and guac, right? Then I'm going to have it, but I'm going to plan for that. And it's not going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? And I'm going to enjoy it. So I don't ever want to not eat for sport, but I cannot sustain myself and get what I want with eating for sport, right? You get what you get when you do what you do. Truth. I love that. Eating for sport versus eating for survival. And I've been trying to retrain myself just in the last, I'd say this year, really retrain my brain to think about nutrients. Like I'm just like, eat for your nutrients because you know you feel better. It's like, it's it's not hard. And the, right. and I love that you say weight loss is a side effect of wellness because it really is. I've lost weight and I needed to, but I think I was eating to cope and some other things that I, I was breaking the cycles of. So yeah, uh, that's so important to retrain ourselves into that mindset. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And what I say to people is, you know, they say, I can't have that or I can't have that. And I said, no, 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 no. Mm. I'm not telling you you can't have anything, right? This is, you know, these are not rules. This is a gift that you're giving yourself. I'm choosing not to have those foods because if I have those foods, I'm going to feel like crap. I'm going to gain weight. I'm going to have fatigue. I'm not going to feel like my A game every day. I'm not going to get up and work out and feel good, right? Mm -hmm. And have this amazing energy and be present for the people that I love around me, right? I'm going to feel like crap. So I choose not to eat those or drink those things, right? So it, it's just a matter of choice and you're fully in control, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think Michael Pollan talks about, I can't remember what book it was, but he talked about if you want something like that, make it yourself. And I've kind of just adopted that mindset too. I eat vegan a lot and very plant-based. And I have really enjoyed going down rabbit holes on the internet and finding like, ooh, can you make like a mayo alternative out of silken tofu? And you can, you know, <laughs> like there's somebody doing it and you can poke around and figure it out and it's fun. Yes. And it's, it's a real shift in mindset, like to For figure sure. out the alternatives. And we have this amazing knowledge at our fingertips. All you have to yeah. do is Google it on your phone, on your yeah. laptop. I mean, like, hello, right? We didn't right? have that yet. We didn't have that <laughs> years ago. I was doing this by myself, you know, trying to figure it out. This information was not readily available. So it, right. like, we almost have no excuse, right? Right. Do you want to speak to, about alcohol a little bit? Yeah. So alcohol, you know, we all have this really... Um, this love affair with alcohol. <laughs> and um, so, you know, it really is an inflammatory food. It just is. It's a, a beverage and it's inflammatory. Wine is my least favorite because wine is highly sprayed. You know, they don't want to lose the crop. So it's highly sprayed with pesticides. There's, uh, you know, the soil is always not that abundant and there's sulfites and sulfates in wine. Most people don't do well with wine. Um, it increases, uh, uh, blood sugar, but if you drink a lot of a lot of uh, wine, which I work with a lot of people who love their wine, we tend to see their iron go up, which is also inflammatory. So I'm not a huge fan of wine. Now they are starting to have tons of wines now. I know of three brands now that have it with sulfites and sulfates. There's organic wines. My daughter just moved to San Francisco last week, and she's like, "Oh my god, she doesn't drink wine, but there's a big like natural wine bar near her." So I'm like, "That's awesome that we now have mm -hmm. these, um, the resources." Um, and then um, I'm a, a more of a tequila drinker or vodka. I think gin is okay too. Their tequila is less processed. I don't drink that much, but when I do drink, I'm definitely going to have a clean tequila with soda and some lime or pomegranate seeds or mint or cucumber or something like that. And, you know, I, I like to have a drink every now and then. Um, and, uh, and so scotches and bourbons, those tend to be a little bit better as well. 
the frou frou drinks we got to get rid of, you know, the lemon drops and the uh, all those, you know, some of those drinks, margaritas, and you know they have so much sugar, so it's not that great. Um, your liver has to process that alcohol, and if your liver is optimal, then it probably is going to process it well. Some people cannot process alcohol, uh, mm -hmm. and so it's a very individual thing. But you know. I, I would look, see where your liver is. If you're congested or fatty liver, I would not recommend alcohol for you at all. And definitely um, detoxify that liver for sure. I, 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 you have a very balanced approach. You have a very realistic and balanced approach to alcohol. And I'm sure that's good for a lot of people to hear because I think that the pendulum swings around a lot there with uh, different experts talking about don't do it at all versus, you know, living your life and understanding how to do it in a controlled way that is going to serve your body. And you mentioned sugar. So let's touch on sugar because uh, we haven't really dove into sugar is the devil. Yeah. Sugar is absolutely the devil. We don't really get any nutrition from it. So it yeah. is, again, I put it in my food for sport category. And mm -hmm. so we're so lucky now because we have all these sugar alternatives, but what sugar does, it creates a fatty liver. It will, um, if you eat a lot of sugar, it will increase your blood sugar levels. We can be insulin resistant for up to 11 years before we become pre-diabetic. Um, I never saw a conventional medicine lab come into my office in all the years I've been doing this, decades, that has ever tested for insulin. So I test everybody for insulin uh, uh, and a fasting insulin and a C-peptide, our most stable mark for insulin, because that is what tells us how hard the pancreas is working. Anytime you eat sugar, or a carbohydrate that turns into sugar, which all of them do, your pancreas pumps out insulin. That insulin is technically a hormone and it's a messenger system. It's converting it into glycogen and then it puts that glycogen into every single trillions of cells that we have in our body. And inside those cells are these things called mitochondria. They're starting to talk about mitochondria, which I'm excited about, but they basically we're determining that the quality of your mitochondria basically indicates the quality of your health. And mitochondria are our energy factories. That's what we use to make energy. We call it ATP. That's our energy. And what do we use for raw material? If we're not on keto. We're using carbohydrates or sugar, glycogen. And so if we cannot penetrate the cell, maybe the receptors are broken, that's called insulin resistant. So your cells are resisting that insulin. And so they're just going to park your uh, glycogen into fat cells and fat tissues, a very effective way to gain weight. The other very effective way to gain weight is to give the cell more than it needs. And so it will just use what it needs for uh, for fuel. And then it just parks the excess in fat cells and fat tissues. So sugar can cause fatty liver. Uh, sugar can cause disruptances in sleep, skin, mood. Um, it, it, it will alter your hormones. It will alter your thyroid. It can alter your adrenal glands. Uh, your whole endocrine system. And it really does a lot of havoc in your body if you have consistent high levels of um, of sugar. High fructose corn syrup is probably the worst uh, culprit. It really does a lot of damage. Uh, you know, it gums up your liver and your gallbladder, all those things. Um, drinking sugar is like the worst thing you can do because there's absolutely no fiber in it at all. If you eat an orange, you're having some fiber with your sugar, with your fructose. Um, there's different types of sugars. We have sugar, lactose in uh, dairy. We have fructose. We have sucrose, which is just um, regular sugar. So there are alternatives to sugar now. I'm a huge fan of a fairly newer one on the market called allulose. I use it in my products. I use it in baking. I use it in my kitchen if I am um, making something. I've been kind of on a kick of making um, healthy ice cream with my Ninja Creamy. And so sometimes I'll use allulose. It comes from a fig, a raisin, or jackfruit. It's minimally processed. It does not spike blood sugar levels. It does not give you gastric upset. And the greatest thing about it is it's really not digestible. So the government, the FDA makes us put carbs and, and, uh, and sugar on our labels, but you really don't digest it. So it's almost like a free food. So nice. I value those. Yeah. There's my nice. fruit, which is awesome as well. It comes mm -hmm. from a fruit uh, from China called Luhan Gao and monk fruit's kind of expensive. So you will see most companies cut it with um, erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. 
Mm. And um, that can give you a little bit of stomach upset if you eat too much, but monk fruit's also great. Uh, no blood sugar impact um, and it's completely natural and um, and no gastric upset unless you're having a lot of erythritol with it. And then there is um, stevia, which is also from a plant, totally natural. Some people like the taste, some people don't. Again, no major sugar impact and easily easy to digest. You just want to watch out for too many sugar alcohols. We have sugar alcohols that are naturally occurring in berries and cauliflower and things like that. But when you're taking it out as a, um, a sweetener, you just have to make sure that you don't have too much because you will get some gastric upset. Great. Those are awesome alternatives and totally doable. Like order my names. <laughs> um, I also want to touch on iodine because I know that there are a lot of people experiencing iodine deficiency because we use Himalayan rock salt and things like that. Is that is that accurate? Well, you're going to get a lot of minerals with Himalayan salt and sea salt, which I'm a mm -hmm. big fan of. And iodine, we get natural sources from any fish products that we have. It could oh, be, okay. It could be Good. Any shrimp, any seafood that you eat, you're going to get some levels of iodine, yes. Mm -hmm. Iodine is very controversial in the Hashimoto's world um, because some will say absolutely avoid it and some will say you absolutely have to supplement with it. I don't give it to anybody unless I'm testing them for their iodine. And it's really, it's a urine test and you have to see how much you're holding and if you really need it or not. But I feel like we can get enough iodine through our food sources if you're eating uh, uh, foods that are high in iodine. Oh, okay. And that's mostly fish, you said? Fish, seaweed, dulse, things like that. Seaweed. Okay, cool. Yeah, I love seaweed. All right. Well, what have we missed that we really need to touch on? Amy, we could talk for days. Um, yeah. So the only thing I would really say is, um, you know, detox and cut out your toxins. I'm mm -hmm. happy for your listeners, 10% off my RGN detox, which is a 14 day detox, which is awesome. Uh, I do it all the time with based collagen. We also have a vegan one, but you're eating real food, right? It's not about starvation or deprivation. Um, and, um, I would also encourage people with any thyroid issues. I have a course called achieving optimal thyroid health, which really tells you everything you need to know about thyroid, um, because it's really, really, really important. It intersects with so many systems in the body. So it's really important that your thyroid is optimized and not just finding out what your TSH is. So I did that course. I put everything I have in my heart into that course because I've learned so much in my journey. And it's for anybody who has hypo or hyper, any autoimmunity, and anybody with a thyroidectomy, and then what to eat, what not to eat, what supplements to take, what supplements to avoid, and how to read your blood work so you know what to order and how to interpret that, right? I love that. Have is Has there been an increase in thyroid issues in people, or do we just know more about it now? That's a good question. I believe that we're testing more, but the um, we do have an increase in autoimmunity. And so I've mm -hmm. asked that question too. Is it because we're testing more or is it because we know more? Um, I I believe that my both my grandmothers had Hashimoto's, but I don't think anybody ever tested them. And then I just saw my- Why uh, do you think that? Is it genetic? Because, because of genetics? Or, cause, oh. But did you see it in their health or genetics or- Yes. So both of them had a, um, they were on thyroid medication mm. and then my, one of my grandmothers had a goiter, which is an iodine deficiency. And so I think that she probably had a Hashimoto's not that a goiter is common for, uh, Hashimoto's, but I do think that there was something, some medication or something. I mean, I was so young, so I don't know. Um, but I don't think we tested. I don't think we even knew mm -mm. It was right. So right. I think that Hashimoto's has been, my mother has it. And um, I know that my dad's identical twin brother had it. So, um, and I know that my dad has it. So, and there, his doctor doesn't even know, doesn't say anything to him. So they don't even treat him. So it's, uh, it, wow. you know, it's a generation of, you know, and my dad says, well, I'm, I'm 86, I'm old. I'm like, no, you don't have to feel like crap at 86 just because you're 86. You know, you got to look into why you feel like rap. So, you know, I always say to people, if you feel like something's off, something's off, you know, you got to chase it. So I, I love I that. Think, I think we're more comprehensive in our testing. I think so too. And, and I mean, lifespans weren't as long back then and people were 
living hard. <laughs> like life was a lot harder, but their food was cleaner. So, you know, it's just right. kind of, yeah, it's hard to, to gauge. I was just wondering your take on it. So, yeah. all right. How can every, thank you for the discount. I yeah. want to do it too. And I want, I'm going to make Justin do it. So expect to hear from us and how can everybody find you and yeah, order your book I, and all that? I work uh, online with people all all across the country, and I work in person as well in my office if you're local to Newport Beach, California. Um, you can find me on my website at Risa, R-I-S-A, Gru, G-R-O-U-X, nutrition.com. Uh, you can find my book, Food Frame, Diet is a Four-Letter Word there. You can find my course, Achieving Optimal Thyroid Health, and you can find my um, my quiz, my food frame quiz, what's your food frame? It's like 12 questions, easy. It gives you an idea of what you should be currently eating. And then um, I have all my products there, my detox, my collagen, all my supplements that are all, as you said, third-party tested, GMP approved. I'm very picky about what goes into my body. So everything is gluten, dairy, soy, sugar, corn, crap free. So it. yeah, it's all there. Yeah. And also- I so love that. Is recently and, also, and also what? Social media is all Risa Green Nutrition. Okay, awesome. All those links will be in the show notes. And uh, how long have you been developing your own supplements? Oh, gosh, uh, years and years and years and years. So I like that. For 10 Good. years, probably. Yeah. Great. Years, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I this has been just a pleasure. Thank you so much for your expertise, for all you're putting out into the world and for taking the time to come on the show today. I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me. This has been a pleasure and thank you for doing what you do. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you to everybody who tuned in. Uh, check the show notes, go follow Risa and check out her website because it's all there. I really, truly enjoyed Food Frame. Uh, there are tons of recipes for each avenue of food eating or <laughs> diet. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for, yeah, for each, each diet. And so they look phenomenal. And I am just so excited to share this. So go check it all out. It's on the show notes. Remember to rate, review, subscribe, all those good things. And just by showing up here, you are doing something to up-level your life and learn and open your mind to that knowledge is power, which is so, so true. So thank you for being here till next time. The end. This has been the Amy Edwards Show from Overcome Studios. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. And thank you so much for being here. Sign up for our newsletter at amyedwards.com.